If you are like most Hero Forge users, you probably never used the horn section very much until you randomly looked at the Reddit one day and then just had your mind blown by these like weird custom hairstyles or epic custom helmets. But even if you've seen just how cool these can be, it can often be very daunting, especially if you're new to learn exactly how to use these features, as it's definitely one of the more advanced parts of Hero Forge. But that's what this video is for, so whether you want to make spicy custom hairstyles, huge creepy helmets, disgusting tentacle faces, or just slap tongues on the monsters, this is the guide for you, enjoy! So let's start off with the basics. You click on head, and then you click on horns menu, and then you simply slap something on. Whether you want to add dragon horns or an actual lizard, or if you want cool spikes on top of a dwarven helmet, or if you just want to make a proper custom hairstyle, you just choose something in here and you start. So here we have this cool edgy character who, by the way, already has some advanced horn hair here, but we'll get to that later. For now, by being in the horns menu, we simply pick a horn. Maybe we want one whole horn on the right side like this. You can unlink them with the top right option here, and then we maybe have a broken horn of the same version on the left side. Then we quickly color them like bone. And then we just pose them appropriately. And there you go. Now our edgy dressed in black and red hero is also a tiefling. You know, why not? It can't hurt, but anyway, let's let, let's move on to something a little bit more interesting now. So let's what do what I would argue most people are probably after when they use horns in Hero Forge. That is to say, spicing up hairstyles, custom hair. So the first thing you want to do is choose a hairstyle. And now I will say, typically the older hairstyles look a lot better than the newer ones because they, they like horns, like for example these ones. They 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 look fairly bulky, right? Which means if you combine them with the newer, crisper looking hairstyles, it's not going to mesh as well. Like so, this is the horn hair that I did for this character during the actual. The fallen hero video right and if i if i change this hairstyle to this which is a much newer hairstyle you can see that it no longer blends as well because the quality of this hair looks much higher but if i go back to this older hairstyle you're gonna see that it actually blends fairly well this one the swept back hair because now suddenly the texture is much lumpier i guess i guess you could say basically it's a bit of a clash in style so yes while generally i would recommend newer hairstyles because they look better sharper etc when it comes to specifically meshing horn hair i would sometimes recommend the older ones instead so let's start off with a short hair example, right? So here we have a fairly normal, standard, short hair hairstyle and hero forge, and we're going to be using horns just to spice this up, make it a little bit more unique. Now I've chosen chosen the bed head hairstyle here because I want it to look kind of spiky, right? So we can start by enabling these the very front horn here at the front of the head. For this horn that's situated right here in the middle, you only get one. So regardless of which one you choose, you know, if you're doing hair, generally either this one, the spike horn, or the short crown hair. So we can take this one and we can pose it just a little bit like this so that it kind of looks like it's part of the spiky hair now it's not gonna look like it's a part of it like horn hair always looks terrible until you actually color it so for now just be patient don't think about it too much just bear with me okay now we go to the next closest one so that would be this option up here now again we're, because because this is short hair right like we could of course go completely haywire we could put these ones on and we could pose them down like this and we could say that he's got these huge bangs hanging down the side of his head like this but let's be honest if this is the hairstyle we're working with that's gonna look really stupid okay so we're gonna stick with these little short spiky hair the short crown horns are also really really good if you're practicing with horn hair because they're very forgiving they're easy to use so now we are gonna disable so that we're not posing these simultaneously because by just clicking this on link option here then we're gonna take this one like this Now what I'm doing now is just kind of adding to the spikiness of the hairstyle, right? Like I'm making it even messier than it already is per default. And then of course we're going to go to the next step, the ones that are just slightly further out than those. And we're again going to put on short crown hairs again. And then we're going to pose these ones as well. We're going to unlink them and I'm going to use this horn to cover up this receding hairline here because this character is not meant to look that old. So there we have another spike and this one is going to do the same thing on this side. Now you can kind of see where this is starting to shape up. So we can now finally apply some color and you will see a result like this. Boop, and damn, like tell me that doesn't look like it's part of the hair. You've now effectively changed the hairstyle just a little bit by slapping down a few horns and coloring them identical to the hair. So if you want to see with and without, let's see this. That's the difference. And I don't think it's a bad difference. But again, if we didn't have this old hairstyle, like if we put on a newer one again, then it would not look as clean. Like if I put this on, yeah, you, you, now, now suddenly it does look out of place, you know? 
But if you're doing these kind of short hair hairstyles, there's still another thing you can do. And on this very back layer, so these are the ones that sit furthest at the back right now, all the way here. Now on this level, even with short hair hairstyles, I would recommend this, the wispy antenna horn, which by the way, is just a great horn in general. This, these ones are so versatile for so many things, but because we're slapping them on at the very, very back, we can now post them to a rather interesting spot to add to this hairstyle. So if I take this and I glide it forward like this yeah yeah now you can see what i'm kind of going for i'm gonna add to these spikes here at the front see the, this second one here this one might be a little bit overkill but let, let's try it for now so let's throw on some black hair again and boom see try and tell me now that this guy doesn't <laughs> have the complete bed head right like this 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 is i mean look maybe it's the inner anime fanboy in me but this looks cool to me like this is good so yeah here's an example of how you would spice up a short hair hairstyle by adding horn hair you know just slap down some horns color them like the hair and post them carefully and eventually it will look right all right so here's another example what about the long hair like we've got here i mean the most well-known example is probably going into like the back hair layers and you would apply something like these ones the sleek dragon horns so if we post these carefully down into her now just like before I recommend unlinking these horns and then we pose one down like this and the other one down like this and then of course you color these two like hair and I mean it's 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 not perfect it becomes less and less clean in my opinion the longer the hair is that you're working with because the bigger the horns the more obvious it is what you're doing but if we for example had double model we could always stack more of these until this the hair here looks as thick as the hair back here and because we also have more hair on the sides we can actually now enable a second pair of horns to also go down so we we go a little bit further up on the head and we enable these and then we do the same thing again See, now again, now it's starting to look slightly better because now we've reinforced it with an extra pair of horns which helps connect it by, by having this extra horn here and here to the rest of the hairstyle. But with a longer hairstyle like this, I mean, again, you, you always need to shape the horn hair around what hair you're using. Like, let's for example say I swap all together like this. Yeah, now this doesn't look natural at all anymore, does it? Because like, you, you, like I said, you always pick a hairstyle first and then you shape the horn hair around it. The perfect example of this would probably be, so there's a very, very popular horn that a lot of people will start off with and I recommend using it too. So if you go into this one, this, this these front horns here, and then you scroll down and you find the curved horns down here you click this and then this you pose into the forehead carefully like this and then you tilt it like this and now you color it like hair and what you'll find is it kind of looks like a swept fringe now it's not perfect and it does work with this hairstyle as well but there are other hairstyles where it would work better so the perfect example would be the shaggy hair if I put this on boom you will see now we already have this fringe which is then further reinforced by having the extra horn on top of it and you see it just it just kind of blends together and it looks great it just makes the current fringe looks look thicker but now again these ones that we put here aren't quite as perfect anymore because they don't match with this hairstyle as well as they did with the other one now honestly there is no end to the combinations that you can pull off in regards to like custom hairstyles right like any number of posing differences here can change the entire look you're going for so obviously i can't go, go over every single one but these are the basics like you can you grab a horn you color it like hair and then you pose it into the hairstyle or the other way around doesn't matter what order you do it in it's that simple just don't be afraid to toy around with it and yes whilst we're still talking horn hair you can also use horns to augment beards in the same way you just post them further down I've, I've used this technique to make proper broad dwarf beards in the past my dnd build as well as you know the little squared beards like my gunnar or my carl technique all right then now it's time for the spiciest stuff custom helmets so okay if you are new to using horns then i honestly recommend you start small on this point like my initial dive into this personally was literally just doing really crappy stuff like these crowns with the little spike horns like making the middle ones a little bit bigger than the ones on the side which then as the newer horns were dropped turned into helmets like these instead but all in all it was all very very basic for a long time as far as I was concerned. Then I went from there to learning how to do stuff like faceless half helmets which 
Porsche. <laughs> I mean, this look, this one I was really proud of at the time, but in hindsight, it's just pulling down a, a bunch of these moth horns over the top of the face. It's, it's really not that advanced. But from there, you know, it was getting more comfortable with augmenting basic helmets, like adding stuff like feathers and added horns to the side to make them look even more awesome, or, you know, slapping horns inside of heads to create custom stitches, like on the Abomination, or in a similar vein, learning how to clip horns down inside of bodies to give characters extra spikes. And <laughs> I mean, at, the, at, the, at that point, like I did with this rat model, you're basically creating custom armor, not just custom helmets. Anyway, just like with hairstyles, you start with picking a helmet. And again, you want to pick one which has a similar texture to the horns you intend to use. For example, some of these distinctly skeletal and bony horns will be better suited on headgear that fits. Like, for example, this rat. But let's start off with something fairly generic, you know, something that a lot of people are likely to want to do. Let's uh, spice up this Greek helmet. So we'll, we'll put this on quickly. Now, this helmet is already very, very cool on its own. But how can we decorate this using horns? Well, we can go into the front horn section where, again, you only get one, right? And now the best one that I would recommend here for most helmets is something like the plated head fin. This one thing can be really cool on a lot of helmets. So you take this then you go into posing and you tilt it forward a little bit like this. Now, suddenly we have this cool spike in front of the cloth thing here, right? Now we can go further back and we can apply something like at the very back end. Now these feathered horns are only available on the very furthest back. So we could apply the feathers at the back here. And now you see we can color this the same as the cloth in the middle later. And then on the second furthest back, maybe we could apply again these very, very flexible ones that I recommended before the wispy antenna horns. And now if we pose these upwards, exactly, we can rest them on top of this curve here. And we can kind of add these extra spikes. Now I'm gonna be honest, I think Although that might be cool and edgy according to some, I think that is a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those for now. Now let's quickly color this helm in. You know, this character is very generic and gray. So we can just apply the same color everywhere here for the time being to make it easy for ourselves. And then we slap on a bit of red. And there we go. Now we have taken a helmet, which normally, I mean, this helmet is already cool on its own, but if I quickly cancel the horns, you will see the difference. So, okay, I forgot the color or something here. Don't mind me. Let me just pick the Now, to make my point, if I quickly cancel the horns, you will see the difference. Like this is without, and this is with. This is without, and this is with. Now, of course, again, this is so far from the only combination you can do. I mean, like, I could do this and I just take off the front horn and you'll see the feathers fit just as nicely on this helmet. Reversely, I could keep the front horn and I could go for a helmet like a... I could slap on the Helm of the Mountain King and then I could remove the feathers and instead start slapping on. Like, you see how this extra spike here fits very nicely with this? And then you can even apply a second spike on the, the back layer here. <laughs> and now... Yeah, the plate, the, the head pin has some interesting options as well, and now I could literally get a double spike if I wanted to. I mean, again, this right here, again, is head, head, heading into the territory where I just think it's too edgy, but to each their own, you know? Now we could slap on some extra horns if we want to make this look even more evil. Let's see what we can do. So we have these horns here, which I know for a fact look pretty good when they're colored like plate. Now, we've used three out of the, like, five main horn areas, right? But we still have a few left, so, like I said, the most flexible one that I always use, Wispy Antenna. We can smack these on, and now we can pose these right downwards instead. So we don't need the horns to be on the top of the helmet. We can twist them down like this, and now you'll see we're basically adding extra detail to the helmet by adding these little, like, edgy spikes here, which kind of almost makes it look like a like a maw, you know, like there's teeth here, which again adds up very nicely with the spikes up here, you know, spikes up here, spikes down there, etc, etc. And of course, with our final horns, again, we could we could slap off feathers again, but I don't think that really fits when we're making this kind of edgy, you know, Sauron-esque helmet. So we'll slap on some more of these wispy antenna and let's see, where can we smack some spikes? Oh yeah, we can give him like spike eyebrows, like here. Yeah, see, so we, we twist these ones like this and down. And now we give him these kind of extra angry looking eyebrows with the horns Almost. And now, of course, let's color all of this in again with nice monocolor gray and tell me, tell me he doesn't look evil as all hell now. I mean, look, th th this is the point, right? You can take any any combination of helmets or horns, smack them all together, experiment, and you'll make all these custom looking helmets. Like, look, this is with and without. And obviously, again, 
for me this is a little bit too much i wouldn't go this far if i was making my own character but just for the point of proving to you how much you can really do with this i and and knowing how many edge lords there are in the community who love this kind of shit just experiment and have fun and finally of course we have actual custom heads now this is probably what i'm personally least well versed with as i'm a bit of a generic human creator but i have definitely done it a few times with examples like my big bat ears on the blood lord model or to a, to a lesser extent the fat rolls and the tongue on the ham hunch model here but if we are to do a proper example of this let's create something interesting a, a mind flayer okay now the horns that were released quite recently are actually perfect for this so uh, let's go all right so for starters if we're doing like a mind flayer like this right because we're gonna need a lot of horns to be clipping through the back of his head and into his mouth to basically look like tentacles right like so we're gonna be using this new horn here this the corkscrew ridged horns now to hide those we are <laughs> might want to choose like a helmet or a hood that can like properly cover this up like something that will cover the sides of his head so let's go for let, let's just go for a turban so let's color that in quickly okay now that we have our turban let's enable the rest of our horns so we're gonna have more of these corkscrew ridged horns there we go now we have all of them that we can have obviously if we stack two characters then we can have six pairs <laughs> instead of just three pairs which for honestly might be the way to go if you're making a character like this because we're gonna we're gonna need a lot of tentacles to stick out of the front of his face here but for now let's just do a single model now comes the the, the <laughs> now, this is where the fun begins okay so now we start posing these into his head like this so this can be a bit finicky and sometimes it's better to split up the horns but for now for starters we'll just post them like this so yeah this the, the, these ones are probably good because we're going to need horns sticking out on the side. So let's start with that. We move on to the next pair and we post these ones down as well into his fa face. So now you can see we're well on our way, but let's keep at it. Yeah, as you can see though, like at the same time, we're kind of running out of horns, right? Because like if we really want a true tentacle face, then just these might not honestly be enough to cut it. Uh, we, we can obviously like find some ways to like alleviate this on a single model like we can make the horns a little bit bigger to make them take up more space and now you can see now you can see what I mean uh, what is this what have I created what is this Cthulhu face I mean honestly this doesn't even look bad like this looks creepy as hell in its own way and it's by complete accident that I put this together but like the, the, this just goes to show how many options there are but anyway let, let us stick to the original plan okay so let's first post this horn here into his head like this yeah there we go now we have a nice creepy tentacle sticking out there towards the side and then we do the other one And so now you saw with that final tentacle, we actually managed to cover up the mouth, which was really the last thing missing. So now you can kind of see how we have this creepy squid mouth sticking out there with this like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, like this is not bad. Like for a little NPC, like say, let's say you're doing like a D&D campaign and you want this to be a little model for that. This is not bad. This works for as a mind player as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, again, obviously, if we slapped on two models and we double the amount of horns here, which... Fine, 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 fine. I will do it. I will do it. Give me a second, okay? And this right here, by the way, goes as a general rule for all horn, uh, horn, horn hair and horn helmets and everything. Stacking models means that you get twice the options that you would otherwise get, which, especially with horns, when you already get to have like 12 different ones on one model alone, is like, that is that is huge right like there's so much you can do by stacking all the horns available on two different models like then there's honestly no end to the amount of options you get but for now let's take the extra model and let's pose around all these squids tentacles even further And there we go, I mean, now you try and tell me that this doesn't look like an awesome mind player. I mean, like, look at this face, this is just great, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> there, there, there's more things you can do, always, like, we, 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 we could even go into the front horn here and we could slap the, the, the beetle horn on, and if, if we want to, like, make his face look even less human, we can twist this down like this and then tilt it down into his face like this. 
and like we could color that like the skin obviously that wouldn't work with the turban but the point is just there's always so many things you can do with horn hair and especially when you're stacking two models i mean the custom helm is like you, you see now what i can do with 12 horns for a mind flare imagine what you can do with 12 horns when you're trying to put spikes all over a sauron helmet with two helmets stacked on top of it as well like it there's it's so awesome just yeah yeah uh, in, enough said let's move on okay thank you for watching I, I i hope that some of this was useful if you're just starting out with horns or even if perhaps if you're a veteran maybe you learned something new you never know in my eyes personally out of the like big four you know wings horns tails and extra arms i definitely think that horns is probably not just the coolest one but also the one which are easiest to use for beginners especially compared to tails i mean christ but even something like just slapping a feather on a helmet like this like it goes a really long way for a lot of models so i definitely recommend learning this if you haven't already anyway if you like this video then please press like and if you didn't like this video then by all means press dislike the example models that i used in this video will be linked in the description below if you want them along with a link to the discord if you want to join the community now with that said goodbye